here we have the slide show of the periodic table. Um, as you can see, there's about 18 columns in total. Um, but just for your own sake, what I want you to think about is just disregard everything that's in the middle here. Uh, and we're just focusing on the first two columns here, group one, group two, then starting from boron, group three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the eight that we're going to look at and focus on. Okay. And as you can actually see from where these are positioned, um, you can see they have different, you know, properties. So anything on the last column here, we call these the noble gases or inert gases. Um, their trait is they don't react. Okay, so they're really safe for, let's say for helium using in balloons, neon with lights, argon with lights, they're really stable. We have in group one over here, uh, really reactive, probably the most reactive, uh, one of the most reactive elements of the periodic table. So hydrogen, very reactive, lithium, very reactive, sodium, potassium in bananas, uh, cesium, francium, and so on and so on. Okay, so we're going to actually look at how is the electron configuration. So how are the electrons placed inside each and every one of these elements influences how reactive they are in reality. So one of the things I need you to understand is um, how to read a periodic table. You probably know this, um, so just good stead just to give you a refresher. So on a periodic table, there's four things to look at the top number of that periodic table, that's called the atomic number. That essentially tells you how many protons, neutrons, well, not protons, how many protons and electrons you have, okay? So, I have the drawing pen. So here with sodium, I have atomic number of 11. That represents that this sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons, okay? Na is the shorthand symbol to represent the element. So the actual name of Na is sodium. Usually um, the first two letters or the first letter of the name of the chemical is the symbol. Um, sometimes when you see these kind of symbols that don't match with the actual name, that's because it's been derived from its Greek or Latin name. So in Greek, I think it's Greek, or um, sodium is actually known as natrium. So hence why it's Na at the front here. And then we have the atomic mass. Now in the actual periodic table, it's a decimal number. Uh, we call that the atomic weight. Uh, it's slightly different from atomic mass, but you can use the atomic mass to work out how many neutrons you have, okay? So the atomic mass is made up of protons and neutrons. In sodium, I have 11 protons, okay? So 23 minus 11, that means I have 12 remaining. So the other 12 of this atomic mass is the 12 neutrons. So that's how you can actually work out how many electrons, neutrons, and protons in an actual element. Okay, so you can actually use this information uh, to work out the chemical structure or the atomic structure of a particular atom. So let's say uh, nitrogen, okay, it has seven uh, electrons in total, okay. This is obviously easy if you have a periodic table in front of you, uh, and it has an electron configuration of 2,5, okay. So let me just quickly show you where uh, nitrogen is. Nitrogen is in this position here, okay. If we actually count uh, its atomic number, so it goes across, so hydrogen is 1, helium is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So nitrogen has an atomic number of 7. Now, if we actually have a look as well, it's in row number 2, so row 1, row 2, okay? So depending on which row it's in, 
that'll tell us how many electron shells there are in nitrogen. Okay? Hence why we have two numbers here, because it's in the second row, so it has two shells for the electrons to be placed. You'll also see the numbers 2 and 5, okay? Uh, just to explain how we get number 5 here, we actually have a look. So it's in group 1, group 2, group 3. Remember, we're ignoring this middle bar here. Group 3, group 4, group 5. So depending on which group they're in, that will tell you how many electrons there are, or valence electrons, in the last shell. So it's in group 5, so it has 5 valence electrons. It's in row 2, so there's 2 electron shells. Okay? So if I want to draw it out, it'll look something like this. So I have 2 electrons in what we call the inner shell, and then the valence shell, which is the outermost region of the shells, that has 5 electrons here. So that's how you draw the dot diagrams uh, for the examples we have here. So, if we maybe just use an example, so use this example here. Okay, so let's say I want to draw aluminium. Okay, it's in, well, actually, we'll, we'll go a bit smaller. Let's say I want to draw oxygen. Oxygen is in row number two, so period number two. So there's two electron shells, okay? And it's in group number six. So the outermost shell should have six electrons in total. So let me try and draw that out. Okay, so we said before with the electron, it has, just give me a second to set off. So with oxygen, it's in, we said that it's in group six and it's in row number two. Okay, so that means if it's in row number two, we have two shells, two electron shells, and in the most outer shell we have six electrons. Okay, so we can just do oxygen in the symbol for O. In the first shell we'll have two electrons maximum, and this is just a general thing. Um, if you've actually gone past the first row, okay, you always fill it up to two electrons. Okay, so the maximum amount you can have in the first shell is two electrons. In the second shell, or second row, you'll have six electrons. And generally what I like to do is just draw it on all different poles. So that, that and that. So that's the electron configuration of oxygen. Uh, we can write it as 2 comma 6. Okay, so that's the electron configuration there. If we have a look at a different element, let's say helium. Okay, uh, let's try and draw, or we, you can already see that one there. We'll go with hydrogen. So hydrogen is in row number 1 group number one. So, hydrogen is in group one. So that means there's only one valence electron in its outer shell. And it's in row number one. Okay, now the fact that it's only in row number one means the inner shell, most inner shell, hasn't been filled, okay? Hasn't been filled with two electrons. So the way we work out how many there is in the 
in a shell is just by looking at the group number it's in. So hydrogen is in group one. That means it only has one electron. So that's how you draw the configuration of hydrogen. If you want to write the actual number, it's essentially one. Okay. So there's that one there. If you want to do, let's use an example of aluminium. Uh, it's in group three, period three. So I'll just write that down in our little table. So aluminium is in group three and it's in row number three. How would you draw that out? And as I do this, feel free to try it out yourself as well. So first thing we know, if it's in row number three, that means the first shell has already been filled up with two electrons. The second shell, the maximum number you can hold in the second shell is also, or well, not also, but eight electrons. So you can just draw out eight electrons here. There, okay? It's in row number three. That means we have three shells in total. So if I draw the third electron shell, that's how many electron shells we have, given by the number, the row number. And then in terms of groups, it has, it's in group three, which means it has three electrons at its maximum point here. Okay, so that's how you draw the configuration of aluminium. If I wanted to, let's say, draw out or write out the configuration, in the first shell, I have two electrons. In my second shell, I have a total of eight electrons. And then in my third shell, I have three electrons. So this one's for the drawing. This one's to write how many electrons per shell, which is basically what you need to do in your worksheet there. Okay. So that's the example there. One thing you do need to note though, is just a little pattern uh, with the configuration. And that is in electron configuration, if you've maxed out, so the first shell only has a maximum of two electrons, the second shell eight, third shell eight as well. Okay, so that's what we have there and that's for oxygen that's what we have there okay so there you go if you wanted to write the electron configuration say for chlorine um, you can actually work it out very simply by firstly counting the number of shells so we have one two three shells so there's three numbers we're expecting here now the first shell is already maxed out at two. Um, we have eight electrons and obviously, because we already have a third shell, that means the second shell is maxed out at eight. And then if you just count up the electrons in the outer shell, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Okay. Is it eight? Okay. So chlorine would be two, eight, seven. Okay, so that's how you write it there. Right. 